and then uh, we get lucky and we get to hire an individual who does a outstanding job. It was like that diamond in the rough. And fortunately for us, uh, you know, Will came to our, uh, our attention a few years ago. And since we brought him on board, he has done an outstanding job in almost every area of law enforcement. So we've been very pleased with uh, his, uh, his work ethic, his professionalism, and uh, the quality of the work and everything else he's done for us so far. So that brings us to the reason we're here tonight. Officer Hancock, during your short tenure thus far with the Rawls Police Department, you have proven and become a valuable asset for the department. You have received a couple of awards, have volunteered to take on additional responsibilities without question or complaint, and have sacrificed your personal time for the department. The staff looks up to you for guidance, and they, more importantly, they respect you and the decisions you have made thus far. Effective immediately, you hereby promote the sergeant, a well-deserved rank, and I am confident that you continue to do an outstanding job for the citizens of Rawls. Congratulations. Thank you. And you can get the select board here to present him to his sergeant's badge and his stripes. sense to wait until we get an evaluation of the building or is that is it really really they fit together they're separate and they fit together right. so it's all about whether you want to keep them moving separately or whether you want to know one before you move on to the other um, no I mean I, I'm on board with with hiring a consultant um, do you, did you get a sense from either company as to the timing of um, at the time it would be a, sh a short number of weeks before they could start it was fairly immediate I don't know if that's changed now since that's you know we're in a different season now so I don't know if they're 
start to read the report. So the second one did a report for Portsmouth. They did a comprehensive very report for Portsmouth, which I forwarded to you. However, for the price point quoted, it would not include that level of detail. Yeah, it would right. just be a PowerPoint with data points. Understood. Okay. Thank you. All righty. Um, Eversource proposal. So, um, Mike had concerns about signing a multi-year contract even though the cost of this loan slash grant would be covered within the operating budget under current energy costs. Um, he wasn't sure if that was legal or not. I checked with the Municipal Association. They've seen people do it and people not do it. In other words, it can be handled in the operating budget or you can put it in a warrant article. We've seen it both ways. They suggested for more clarity that we speak with the Department of Revenue. However, I don't have a copy of the contract to forward to DRA. So I've asked for that numerous times. Um, he's also, by the way, looking into a proposal for streetlights. So it may be that he hasn't worked out that proposal and he's waiting to put it all together. I'm not sure. Um, but I haven't been able to get a read from DRA until I can get some language for them to review. Um. We also got notification that their rates are going to go up. So the sooner that we can do it, the better we're going to be in the long run. But, um, I but we need that. to have language for sure. Yeah. All right, we so need we're going to wider put chairs. on the, um, the agenda and um, hopefully 
Hopefully, Carolyn can have more uh, info for us next week. Bob, do you want to come out? Hello again. received a grant from Homeland Security to reprogram all emergency responders, potholes, and mobiles, so that they're all going to be uniform with the entire state to include everybody's frequency in the entire state. So, what would happen is um, we would pay to have all of our regular reprogrammed by two-way and then we get 100% reimbursement from the state this fall. Okay. So I have a form here that needs to be signed by a member of the select board to indicate that uh, we have 14, 18, 19 residues within the police department to be reprogrammed. And that you're aware of the fact that the town pays initially and gets reimbursed by the state. I, I anticipate the cost will be about $400. To program all our agents. And um, I, I can absorb that within my budget. So this here is a list of all radios. Second page is the signature. Yes. It's a grant. But that's, that's the inventory of all the police radios. There's no reason that highway would need all of the fire frequencies and police frequencies in the rest of the state. Not that they would need but them all, but like if, if there's an emergency and other people come in here to help, would they be able to communicate with them? Are they now? You know? Well, they, they have all of the, uh, the correct frequencies that they need for now. Um, and all of our frequencies are correct, but there are some others within the state that have recently changed um, within the county and, and elsewhere. This would make everybody on the same page. So when I get in a, well, we'll say like I get in a summons with Cruz and I do like channel three, channel three should be the exact same as the Rawlinson channel. So um, we'll all have the same frequencies. We'll all be in the same in the same bank, the same in the same zones. And it's uh, it's a form that's put together by the, uh, the the state police. So numbers aren't changing. You're just going your your frequency numbers aren't going to change. No. You're just you're. Kind of blending everyone we're, so they we're, actually, we're actually good in Rawlinson. Yeah. It's, it's all the communities that recently changed. Our, their information will be added to our database. Okay. So. All right. So that doesn't affect any other uh, department within town that's going to, they still can contact you via the radio. Correct. Okay. And when the fire department gets their new radios this year, I'm assuming they're going to get it from two way. Mm -hmm. Two way is, is the vendor for this area for this. the more roll radio. So they'll just on every program under the new state specs. Now, does this include your your um, cruisers? Yes. What is, what is that like a portal? Is that no, this is a portable? A mobile. A mobile. There you go. Sorry. Four mobiles, a base station, and the rest of portables. Okay. All right. You sell it, right? Yep. Okay. So, any questions? No. Nope. Okay. No objection. Um, Want to make a motion for this? Uh, sure. I'll, I'll make a motion that we uh, accept the grant from the city of New Hampshire for radio reprogramming. All right. And I'll second that. All those in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> opposed. All right, so I sign where? Here? Where the pink, uh, where the pink is? is yeah. Okay. And for the future.
Okay, purchase order number 1682 to Cognitive and Behavior Therapies of Newburyport for one return to work psychological evaluation for $400. And that will come out of our preventive health line item. Okay. I'll move purchase order 1682 to Cognitive and Behavioral Therapies uh, in the amount of $400 for a return to work evaluation. I'll second that. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, purchase order number 1681 for the city of Dover. Uh, last week, the cruiser number 72, which is the 2014 Ford Explorer, was making some noise in the back. And come to find out, the right rear wheel bearing was fused solid with the knuckle unit. And they found that we needed to uh, also add a belt tensioner and four tires. So that is going to come up to approximately $1,200, and that will come out of our vehicle maintenance line. Okay. We'll move purchase order uh, 1681 to the city of Dover in the amount of $1,200 uh, for repairs to Cruiser 72. 72, yes. Okay. All right, I'll second it. Um, is there state tires? Is there a recommendation of what type of tire goes on? Yes, they get the, the state bid tires. Okay, yes. so the price is so as good as they're going to get. Okay. Right. Any other questions? No. All right. Others in favor say aye. 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 And the city of Dover orders so many tires that they, they get them directly as opposed to going to like Sullivan Tire as the, the vendor for this area. Okay. So they get them directly. Purchase order number 1684 to Two Way Communications in Newington to purchase one remote speaker microphone for a new officer, which is that microphone that goes right there, mm -hmm. and two earpiece with translucent tubes, so those little things that we wear in the ears when working details, uh, for $259.84, and that will come out of the radio repair line item, and that's an anticipated expense. Okay. I'll move purchase order 1684 to Two Way Communications. For two fifty nine eighty four for um, remote speaker microphone and earpiece. I'll second it. And this is for the the one who's in the academy now. Correct. Okay. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 And the last one, the big one. Two way communications. Purchase order number one six eight three. Um, I went through with the tech down there and looked at the, the equipment that will come out of the Taurus and what will fit and what will not fit in the new vehicle. Mm -hmm. Some of it will, some of it won't. Um, uh, this year in 2020, Ford decided that they actually changed the size of the Explorer. They actually made it a little bit bigger. So not all the equipment will come out of the Taurus and fit into mm -hmm. the, the Explorer. Uh, but, but some of it will. So this was not that bad. So two way. With, would take about two months, uh, two, two to three months to order the equipment. We don't anticipate the cru cruiser arriving from Ford probably until about August. Mm -hmm. So we need to give uh, two ways some, some lead time to order equipment to have on site for when the vehicle is here. So we're looking at all emergency lighting. We're looking at uh, the cage can go from the new old vehicle to the new vehicle. Um, we have to order a second cage to behind the seat because the Explorers have two cages where the sedans only have one. Um, console center console, um, the radio, radar unit, MDT, mobile data terminal, uh, will all remain uh, from the old vehicle. So with, with uh, taking the equipment out of the old vehicle, purchasing a new equipment and transferring some of the old equipment into the new vehicle, in labor, it comes to $13,167, which will come out of article number nine, and we set them up, we actually set amount aside to, to equip the new vehicle. Enough, enough money? Yes. All right, I'll move purchase order 1683 to two-way communications uh, for $13,167 for equipment for the new cruiser. I'll second that. Any discussion? Okay. So was that all in the same warrant article yes. um, to buy the cruiser and equip it? Yeah, to pay for the first, first year's lease and equip it.
Council present for that? Aye. session for uh, gun safety? Yes. Did, did that fill up? Or you, yes. Yeah. We have actually have 10. Uh, we have a couple people on the waiting list. Um, the classroom is actually this Thursday and the range, will, the range time will be this Saturday. So we actually do have enough people that probably uh, maybe the end of July we'll have another class. So, yeah. Okay. Anything else? Nope. Thank you very much. Weekend, I just let you know I changed your emergency light up the other one was fried. Okay. It's, uh, so is that trash? Sitting on a pile of okay. like, rich chicken is going to be down first tomorrow and we're going to go to the transfer station on Wednesday. We go to bed and we go to the How did you figure that out? Well, it's easy. It's just three wires. No, no. How did you figure out it was fried? Yeah. No, uh, Richard uh, found it didn't work. Oh. So we looked at it and with the terminals on the top had all fried out. You can and see then, it's got the batteries all plugged in. Uh, yeah. And then yes. at, at one point the, uh, the cover yeah. fell down. Both the bulbs busted on that thing, mm -hmm. so it wasn't, wasn't working anyway. So, uh, you know, I think it was the Home Depot and like 30, 40 bucks, whatever. It was fairly cheap, mm -hmm. much cheaper than what those those were. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. This one here has a small uh, Nikon battery, and that one here actually has one of those big batteries that you find like in a motorcycle or an yeah. HRV. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So, well, thank you for doing that. Yep, not a problem. Enjoy it. Thank you. All right. <laughs> I'm not hearing what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good night. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. <laughs> and already got tuition and all of that, so... Um, There's I'm no access to the schools at all for the month of August? Correct. Well, it was a bathroom in the teacher's room. Okay. But, well, not a class, but not a classroom in case of inclement weather or very hot weather, they used to be able to go into a classroom. And it's always been that way for as, for, as long as I can remember, 40 plus years. Um, so I am going to write a letter to the school board and find out why and, and see what we can do about it. Um, the gym, depending if the gym does not get its floor done, okay. then we will have access to the gym. But if they get the floor done, nobody can walk on it once it's done until school starts. You know, so probably you're thing over the floor. Yep. So um, I'll keep you updated, but um, it, we just found out last week, so we were all really surprised by that. Any, I don't know. Any sort of contingency plan? There is no place to have anything. That may be hard to think about what's in the answer. Did you get, somebody was looking at um, a quote for an enormous tent in the yard? We were, yeah, well, um, the principal's suggestion is to get one of those big party tents. Yes. But um, what I've gone online, first of all, you got installation of it, and it, it's going to be close to a grand. Because well, you got to have it for almost, well, say three, three and a half three weeks. weeks, yeah. yeah. It's, and I'm not sure that I would want something and have that responsibility to having for that, that long. For that long. Available for the grace for mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. if they haven't already been booked for the weekend. That's true. That's true. Mm -hmm. So Kelly was looking into it. Mm -hmm. um, I was just right. going online yeah. looking into it. But uh, there's six no meeting. way. We don't have any money. Yes, ma'am. I have a 16 meeting. You have a 16 by 30. Oh, 16 by 30. 30. And you could do some pop-ups for this. Maybe. How much do you want for that? <laughs> More than welcome to have that. Doesn't have signs. Well, thank you. I'll, I'll get back to you on it. Let me see what. I'm hoping we can still get our classroom back. Or a classroom back. But I will let you know. Thank you. Um, so, um, you know, I think that is something that we can talk through enough before we started putting our hair just
administration's out there and people saying, and then now you're saying you may have to cancel. And so we're um, we're working on that. She's not here for that. No. Okay. Um, she asked for it to be on the agenda. So yep. I guess it's uh, somebody right. has some. Um, I mean, um, sorry. You can table it. Celia has some um, yeah, right. things that we maybe we'll table it now and then come back to it. Yep. Um, because there is some um, tight deadline. Um, all right, Could so we potentially use some of that grant money to like paint a tent? Well, that's not what they that's applied what for. Okay. Yeah, um, they applied for T-shirts and um, you know um, some of the uh, sport equipment and stuff. Okay. So we we have a grant, and that's what they applied for. That's what they yeah, that's for. yeah. okay. Um, stormwater asset. John Jackman and Helen Tanner Associates last week. Um, Mr. Jackman's filled out a pre-application for us to submit to the state for an asset management grant for our stormwater system. Um, it's for $30,000. It does not obligate the town to continue to apply and receive this grant, but it is required to be submitted by the end of next week. So. Um, you can review it tonight, and, and I would hope sign it next week. Um, Stormwater is meeting next week, and they will get the details of the scope. The grant would be to assess the assets of the stormwater system, which means the catch basins, the pipes that connect them, the pipes that go out into rivers. Um, what are the conditions of the catch basins? Some of them don't have bottoms. They're required to have bottoms. They didn't used to be. Um, the cross pipes. Um, so what Paul and I felt would be most useful, and we're going to pass this by the Stormwater Committee next week, which, has, which can revise the scope with the board's final ultimate decision about the grant, um, is to take a map of Rollinsford and overlay it with the MS4 map, because not the whole town is in the MS4 district, and then overlay that with the storm drain system, because they don't all connect, and they go, you know, they outfall into different areas, and we need to know where they connect with other systems and where they connect with brooks and rivers. And then to have that map be interactive so that we can see when each catch basin was last inspected, what the details of those inspections were, the data about how much was cleaned out of them, um, pictures, and, and this would include taking pictures of, or videos of all of the cross pipes so that we know the condition. And then this leads actually into our next agenda, agenda item, the um, road service management plan, which is to say every section of roadway from one catch basin to the other catch basin would be considered a segment and be named and assessed so that we are considering how we maintain our roads differently so that we are not paving roads two years before we have to dig up and replace a pipe underneath, but that it's all considered mm -hmm. together. So um, so that's what the stormwater asset management grant proposal would be for. Um, the state, Paul spoke with people at DES about um, other grant opportunities, but they don't really want to have us pursue other grants until we do the asset management first. Because essentially, once you know what your assets are and their condition, then you create a plan to maintain them. And that's really sort of the base by which the whole stormwater management plan is, is based. Is $30,000 enough? All right. That's, um, he says it is. Okay. Who's um, well, so, no, John Jackson. Oh, John Jackson. So we'll get as far as we can. I, what I explained was sort of the soup to nuts of what we hope we can accomplish. He feels as though that's doable within that, within, within that amount. Okay. Um, something to know about this is that it is a loan forgiveness program. So by loan, it means there will be short-term interest to total approximately two to four hundred dollars. Funds would be received in 2020, but um, 
So, so the ones the town will be on the hook for is the two twenty dollars. We'll have to expend funds, and as we expend them, we'll be in reimbursed for them. But it will. We can start working on the project as soon as town meeting is over, um, and it can happen by way of its own warrant article or within the operating budget. As far as we have seen for this coming yes, March, not the current budget. No, that's okay. all done. So um, our the stormwater year, because um, it has its own cycle, is from um, October 1st to the end of September. And, and so this will fall right in the middle of our next year. So while it's part of stormwater, it's not exactly part of our stormwater management program. It's a separate entity that's going to kind of go alongside it, which is also necessary to feed the stormwater management plan, which is kind of complicated. OK, so you have to apply for the grant. So the first step is to put this pre-application in um, by next week. It's due the end of next week. Okay. And then we will hear in August whether or not the, st um, the state wants to continue our application. So people at this, yes, in August. Um, people at the state are favoring this because we've actually been approved for it in the past. They never took advantage of it because at the time we didn't have a stormwater committee. So it's, there's a good likelihood we will be approved. We can modify the scope between now and August. And then if we want to go ahead, um, we put it on the warrant or put it in the operating budget. And, then as soon as, and as soon as it is approved by way of town meeting, we can start working on the budget. Are you receiving the grant this year, or are you receiving it next year after our town meeting? 2020. After okay. town meeting. So you're applying for it this year, but you won't receive the funds yes. until 2020. Yes. Okay. So this is part of next year's budgeting. Okay. okay. Any questions? Um, no. Um, I don't. I don't see the need to wait until next week for the fee. I don't either. Okay. No. I mean, I think that we should. We should put you our can name send in. it at, um, between now and August, mm -hmm. um, or you know, it doesn't go through if it's not put on the you know the ballot or in the operating budget. So, um, you can certainly change your minds. Right. Well, I'll, I'll make a motion that we uh, submit a pre application for the clean water with the state of Oregon loan fund. Okay. Great. That's All right. And can I just see it? Sure. Oh, sorry. Is this the one that. That's okay. Oh, is this the original? Um, <laughs> it's all printed. You can just sign it at once. Is it somewhere else? It's. it's oh, um, he wrote it up. He wrote it over it. I can print a new one if you want to authorize. Well, I don't think I said, wrote on the, on the, on the signature page. page. The, I don't know, maybe I did. It doesn't matter. We, we, have have to, we don't have to fill out all of this. Stuff. They're filling all that out, so it just needs to be um, Mr. Jackson and Miles Jackson. Uh, okay. Are they charging us for this? $30,000. Uh, so, the, you know, to be oh, clear, this, is, this benefits them. The work. They're okay. doing the work for $30,000, which is why they're filling out this pre application for us. Okay. Yes. They're going to manage the whole. So do we want them to fill it out and then we'll sign it? We can certainly. Then we can approve and go ahead and get it. I'm not. Yes, it's not too bad. which are, we are not applying for, which is why it's not filled out. Um, nonetheless, um, it looks like that part of pertains. So let me check with him, and I'll make sure that it's appropriately filled out. If you wanted to designate one of you to sign it, though, okay. then I'll make it available for later this week. So a motion's been made and seconded. So um, we, you want to pursue this? Yep. And we will um, sign it once it's completed by the um, I will get back to you when I So, Miles, if you want your thing. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, so, um, do you have anything else to say about SRPC road maintenance plan? Um, yeah, just briefly. Okay. Yeah. Um, I spoke with Suzanne, who managed this um, 
plan the way it's structured regional. At the time it was created, we were a pilot community for new software, which means that it didn't cost any money. Um, I've spoken with both Suzanne and Stratford Regional about the software and the cost. Um, the least expensive option is still $6,000 approximately. And doesn't really change what we already know. So Suzanne's suggestion, you know, for, for whatever um, for whatever value it has, having done the extensive review of Stratford Regional to begin with, is that it wouldn't really change very much about what we know about our data. Um, we move everything up the list, and we can put the rows that we just did at the bottom. Um, so, like I said about the stormwater asset management, you know, rather than spend that money on information that doesn't really incorporate storm stormwater, it would be better. Even if we go, we may still need Stratford Regional in the future mm -hmm. to update that data. The problem with it and why the cost is so high is that they start from scratch with assessing the rows. And, and the data. So it's kind of like doing the project from scratch every single time you employ them to do that. Mm -hmm. It's not just an update. So that's why it's expensive, but um, at least if we're going to do that maybe every other year or every third year, then we can at least incorporate we, what we know about stormwater assets and get better information. And budget it too. Well, and budget it too. We didn't budget this. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Building permit schedule of fees, that was the form that um, that we had gotten from Durham. Are you prepared to do that? I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Why don't we uh, table that until next week okay. and see if we can... Um, um, I, I did read that schedule of fees in that group. It seems uh, like they're expensive. Um, and maybe that's more appropriate, I don't know. Um, so the other thing is, recognition. Um, I think we said that we're not doing it at the school, correct? Um, there was a lot of discussion with that. I'm not sure if that was a natural decision. For sure there are problems with doing it at the school. Well, yeah. I'm not sure. I think we're, we're also talking about, the person and I talking about, you know, more of a not a genetic
all right, and I would suggest that we kind of move it out until um, early fall, because there's so many people only on vacations and stuff, and it might be better to do that. Right. Yeah. Um, but we also have to talk about Michael. Um, but we could do something here for him mm -hmm. when we know when his date is, um, when he gives us a yes. date. Right. Um, that we could do something for his family and whoever, um, mm -hmm. and do something here. Great idea. Is that okay. Yeah. All right. All right. So I'll get back to you on that. Okay. Um, library trustee appointment. Down there. Are you going to be talking about that, or do you just want us to consider him? We we just need you to appoint him. You okay. don't actually consider him. We decide who it is, but the way it works is that you officially appoint. Okay. So he came to the meeting. We've all met and discussed it already, all the hearts and our minutes, and um, all we need you to do is to appoint him until the next, the election, next election, and then somebody will run for that spot. Okay. So uh, I'll, I'll move we appoint Ben Thayer to fill the vacancy as the library trustee. I'll second that. All those in favor say aye. 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 The motion passed. So you'll be, do you send them or do you, do you tell them or do they send it? You're so notified. You're so notified. <laughs> I'll let them know. Okay, so thank you. it officially happened. All right, thank you. Just take it soon. Um, oh, you have, you have to be sworn in. He comes to town. Well, he has to come to see Kate. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Um, okay, policy review, are you at all prepared? Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to table it. Sorry. Yeah, sure. I understand. Okay. Um, town administration, board members' activities and updates? Um, tomorrow night, I believe we have a town board meeting. Um, there is nothing on the agenda, okay. and I'm not sure whether the chairman will cancel it because I know he's nothing on. Sure. I mean, I'm not officially a member, as you know. And I, I can add one. Just out of pure curiosity. I think and Stormwater, you said, is next week. It's it is fall. June 12th, oh, okay. yes. yes. That's I, don't think I don't think I have anything on my plate. Well, Brett, do you weekend? Not, not this week. Okay. Enjoy your week. <laughs> no, but, no budget, right? Um, Next workshop week. is next, next week, week on Tuesday. Next Tuesday. At 6.30 yeah. here. Wow. Um, wow. So I did reach out to members of the CIP committee um, to try to set a meeting in the next couple of weeks. I only heard back from one of the members or two of the members. Um, so I'm still trying to schedule that just to kick it off and assess where we are. And, and who's there? Um, Kevin Haynes, uh, Suzanne. And oh, she's on the front budget, right? She yep. replaced Kim. Yep. Okay. And uh, Judy Nelson from the school. Okay. All right. Town administrator update. Um, so, as I said, I'm not sure that there will be planning tomorrow. Um, there, it, this last weekend was a state planning conference. One of the new members was able to go. Thank you to both of you for that. So we'll hear an update. Um, we just finished our hiring process, and I wanted to thank you both, mm -hmm. and Michael too, for your time with that and helping us review the candidates, and that was really good. You have an offer letter mm -hmm. in your folder there somewhere. Um, I also wanted to let you know, because um, you're not always aware of what's going on in planning, but um, the subject was not the um, Clement Road, which the developer is calling Oldenburg Lane. Met its conditional approval for a revised project, so um, there will be building permits issued out there very soon. Okay. And the road is getting built and all those things. Um, I met with the Seacoast local welfare officials last week, which was a really great meeting. It always is. I learned a lot. Some of which pertains to um, one of the cases we have at hand. Um, and we have a new director in Somersworth um, with extensive experience in Rochester. And so they have, they always have a lot of great things to share. So it was great, um, very great to go there. 
Um, you have a code compliance letter um, in your folder that I wanted to bring to your attention. It was signed by Tom Clark. If you felt as though you wanted it to come from the board, you could revise it to that effect. Um, I, I also wanted to bring to your attention that Mr. Clark is working on a septic failure on Rollins Road. Um, and I'm bringing that to your attention because um, given conversations um, we've had that it, um, compliance, or rather enforcement, is really at the local level. If people um, do not take steps toward remediation, um, it's on us to enforce that. And the state isn't, um, I have Tom Clark looking into at what point does the state step in. I think there might be wetlands behind there, but for the most part that's on us to enforce. So it's going to be a little bit taxing of his time, but um, I'm not sure how quickly that would get resolved. Um, computers were purchased for the office, thank you. Um, the tax collector is on vacation this week, so that worked out well that her computer's getting replaced while she's gone, and that's going well. Um, the other thing is there have been some uh, visual changes to the website, and I wanted to bring that to your attention so you can look at them and provide feedback if you want. I'm trying to work with the volunteer who manages the website to make it a little bit more user-friendly in as much as the free template that we're using allows, and also in as much as Google allows, because there are some constraints with the fact that we use Google Drive for all of our documents and having that play with the website. So um, it's just something we've been working on on the side, so I just wanted to bring that up. Have you talked to Tom about 365? I've talked to Tom about 365. He, um, it was very timely because he had recently attended a workshop by the um, vendor that we use for all our hardware software that the school also uses um, that provides discounts for government and school. Um, that company provides consulting services that can help people switch from 365 to Google and Google to 365. So I'm trying to work out with Tia if we want to have a meeting and um, see if we can conference call or Skype um, somebody from that company and learn more about how extensive that transition is and um, what the cost associated is if they manage it. One of my concerns with switching is that um, all of our documents have different levels. Of, they're shared with different people with different levels of permission, and I'm not sure how well those permissions get transferred. Okay. So. It would be exhaustive to try to do that on our own. It would be nice if we had help, but I'm not sure how affordable that is. So yeah. we're looking into that as well. So you're, you're talking about 6020. Oh, this is not your, your idea. Yeah. It's nothing, yeah, OK. Because then it certainly has to be budgeted. It certainly has to be but budgeted. But if we could have some numbers, that would help to see Absolutely. what we Even if we're deciding what doing. Just Google is not user friendly as I mean, some of the other Excel version yeah. of it. Yeah. Yeah. The idea totally of Google agree. is really lovely and it's a great step forward in having some kind of universal central storage. Mm -hmm. um, the, the idea was to have everybody use the, um, the word processing and spreadsheet mm -hmm. um, software that comes with it. Um, the truth is that nobody's using it because it doesn't have the functionality that we're all accustomed to. Mm -hmm. so, um, rather than have another purchase for additional software, it would make sense perhaps to, um, to transition over into one software package that stores and provides the software that we all are used to using. Mm -hmm. So we're looking into it. Okay. All right. Very good. Um, people are going to place one as this. We'll have to get them out. Um, grants. I also have a purchase order. I can present it to the board. Last week, um, the rec committee decided that we want to move ahead with a field trip to the New Hampshire Fish and Cats game. And the tickets are 1125. There's an email on the back from the Fish and Cats. We're going to, at this time, try and um, purchase 50 tickets if we can. Um, for the rec as a field trip in July. Okay. I'll move purchase order 16.
uh, to New Hampshire Fisher Cats for $562.50 um, for 50 tickets. Second. Any questions? Um, so we buy 50 <coughs> tickets, and if we don't use 50 tickets, then we're we on the hook to pay for them? Um, we pay $50 now. We chose 50 because right now we have 50 plus students who can't just sign up. Okay. And there, yes, there is a stay back option, so they, they don't. And that all the tickets that are purchased, we are being reimbursed for. Right. The families are paying okay. Camp Raleigh for them. And my guess is, is that if we don't use the 50, that they may open them up to parents or something like that. That'll be up to the rec committee to decide. I can't speak for them. Mm -hmm. Is this during the day? It is. They have two days during the summer. Um, July 17th and then the following week, July 25th or 26th, which are camp days. So they invite all of the local summer camps in. And they um, give you three ticket options, just a regular group rate for a ticket, a group rate with lunch, and this includes a hot dog or peanut butter and jelly sandwich, chips and a soda for every student for 11.25. And um, then the third option includes a baseball cap and something else. And in the email, you'll see the final line from the Fisher Cat says they also have the Blue Ocean Society coming with an inflatable whale and some other free fun activities. And then um, I've talked to them, and for ten to fifteen dollars extra, the kids can upgrade their meal from what's offered to pizza, so they'll have to pay extra. And they can do the bouncy houses that are offered along the third baseline or the first baseline where they'll be sitting. Um, but that those like the bouncing houses and stuff will be up to the camp director to decide if it's safe and groups and all of that. Okay, so um, we're doing a purchase order, so that we can receive a check from town to pay this, right, or a credit card or whatever yes. it is. Um, is that something that you can get five sixty to fifty? They accept um, cash or credit. Okay, I was going to check. Them. Well, I can't put that on a credit card, so unless you're going to specifically. Oh, we have time to do the check. To do that. Right. Um, but there's time to do the check by the Yep. And they will accept 50% down and 50% later. So. so this amount is 100%? That is 100% for 50 tickets, to hold 50 tickets. Okay. What is, what is your opinion on deposit? Um, I would just do a deposit. I would do a deposit. Okay. All right. So the first. And what's the date? July 17th. Um, officially, our registration closes next Monday. Um, and you've seen in the past that usually the last week or two, we get a large rush of people coming in. So, and we had 80, we had over 100 campers registered last year. So this is a good number, and it counts both for Teen Camp and um, Camp Road. And there's an opportunity to be able to get more than the 50 if you have more than the 50, right? Because they said that you could, you could increase that. We but can once you know what your numbers are, then, then yeah. you can do that. We just want to start with the 50, mm -hmm. and we can increase later. And if they happen to sell out for that game, then it, we discuss as a committee to be the first 50 kids that for the game. The team camp will automatically go because it's built into their schedule, but for Camp Raleigh, the first 50 that registered, would, or the f first register up to the cap would be the first to go, um, if that makes sense. Yep. Any other questions? No, I'm good. All right, ready to vote? Yeah. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Oh, wait a minute, we didn't make a motion yet. Yeah, did I you make a motion? Did we make a motion? Yeah, sure, too. Oh, okay. All right. So did you second? 50 tickets. Yes. Did you get the PL number of 1638? Yeah. Oh, we must have done it. $562 of 50 cents. Yes, ma'am. You got it. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 missing one, three complete copies, I should say. It is missing um, one document, which is the team camp um, 
on the, it's a one page application, but on the first page it says we request these four additional things to uh, help us make our decision. Your budget, your um, board of directors, your um, history, and um, Supplementary um, funding request, and all of this is in the email too. Um, this is just a printed copy of what was in the email, minus the student and budget. And they, this um, Optima Bank, is, they have an office in Dover. They're based at Portsmouth, and they have um, graciously waived the deadline until tomorrow because the deadline is last Friday, upon approval of No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you're requesting 1500 to $2,000 to, uh, uh, these will be scholarships? Or? No, it's to bring out local artists, speakers, and animal shows to the playground. Because we have the last line. Oh, okay. Oh, I see it now. It's just a lot of... It depends on how much you give to what you bring for. But it's for activities for the, um, the day itself at the location. Animal shows, I don't know. <laughs> There's several in the area that we could come here. Yeah. Okay. Um, from them items to be um, resold in our snack shop. However, if you read on the last page, um, it, under requirements, it says donated um, products cannot be resold. So we changed our um, ask to a monetary donation, and we're asking for them to donate up to $2,000 and they would go to enhance our programming um, or extra activity fees and scholarships, um, create an array of entertainment for all the campers and allow some who would otherwise not come to come. And our first priority, if we were to get money, would be uh, scholarships if there's any available, and then um, a movie license and projector um, that we would need for bad weather. Um, it doesn't have a deadline, they just, um, as soon as possible, so that we can get a response from them. Yeah. Okay. I'll move that we uh, make a, a grant application to Cumberland Farms for $2,000 on behalf of the work committee. I'll second it. Any other questions? Yep. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. And I'm not sure the whole committee got the email or if it just went to Denise as part of the uh, committee, but we did get um, a about package last week from the score committee and we had asked for 1500 to 2000 from them for not only the goods and they gave us 800 or $400 for uh, dollars in vouchers, so $50, dollars $850 vouchers to get up to the did you find out whether or not you can use them all together, or if you have, it's a purchase, one for each purchase? I am confused. That the letter says one thing, and the voucher says another. Mm -hmm. okay, we'll just try to get that verified. And um, the Camp Raleigh director said she would be more than happy to go with me to pick out items. And um, it's been suggested we wrote it for a ping pong table, so we'll go look at that, and then any other. Baseball bases and soccer nets and uh, soccer nets, which um, yep, and baseball bases 
air hockey table and ping pong table is what was requested. I'm not sure we'll be able to get the ping pong table as was forwarded to me. Is that um, or air hockey. Of anything that's going to last. I mean, that's, and where would you store it? Well, we have a shed at the school. Oh, okay. <laughs> but I don't know. Um, uh, well, that would be up to the, the rec directors should be consulted about it. Yes, yeah. yeah. she said she gave she sent me a list of a bunch of things that she would like to see. However, she did um, give the disclaimer that she is yet to see what's in our inventory. So mm -hmm. she would like to look at that prior mm -hmm. to making a decision. Okay. Well, you have to like December. We have until December thirty first this year, so. It, Don't they expire? Still do it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, did we vote? Did we vote? No. Okay. Yes. Yes. No. 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 Did, there's no vote on this. No. Yeah. Okay. Did we vote on this one? Yeah. Yeah. Did you vote? Did we vote? We did. Oh, okay. All right. So yes, it's just time about this. Yeah. Okay. something to do with that already. This yeah. is a different form okay. that sort of files how much total acreage is in current use. Okay. I'm not sure honestly why it's necessary now after you already voted on the amount, but I think it's just, just paperwork. Yeah. Okay, it's just asking for a signature, so I will sign my line. And the two Purchase order, um, I'll, I'll move purchase order 1719. This doesn't go through, it's oh, mailways. Um, uh, for $265 for 1,200 print sort stuff and bundle property tax bills. So the previous purchase order was for the postage for this process. So it's kind of oh, like, if okay. you think about it, they want to deposit and then you pay the balance. It's kind of like okay. that, but essentially you're paying for postage up front and then this is for the waiver. And you verify that this is not certification of the other one? Oh, it's not. Okay. All right. Um, I'll second it. Um, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. This is a, um, a letter of um, an offer letter for the uh, new uh, bookkeeper, administrative assistant for Charles Gaylor. 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 Um, uh, starting at $16 an hour for uh, 20 hours a week. that we offer employment to Charles Geller. Um, yeah, how do you spell that? G-L-E. G-O-E. L-L-E-R. Yeah. Okay. All right. And I'll make a second to that. All those in favor say aye. Aye. We 
have a purchase order 1637 to BAB offset printing, printing of 1400 newsletters at $250.75. I'll second yes. it. Yep. Any discussion? Yep. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. I have a purchase order of 1621 for Ambrose Equipment. This is for one month of excavator rental for a total of $2,300. I'll second that. Um, so this will bring us through like the end of June with this excavator. Yes, and it will complete this project, and it will come and yeah, complete yeah. the project, and it's within the budget amount for it. Was it was in budget. Yeah. Right. Wonderful. Yeah. All those in favor say aye. 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 Purchase order 1525 to Martha Kutcher for the Doe Burial Ground Memorial Day cleanup for $135. And I'll second that. Okay. Any discussion? Um, I guess it's something that happens every year. Okay. So this comes out of the cemetery? Yes. Okay. Okay. Like that? Yep. All those in favor say aye. 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 There's supposed to be eight. I don't know if no. the eight have gone out. The mm -hmm. just, 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 I don't, don't know that we've sent out eight. I, I'm thinking it's not eight, but it's nearly that. Did so you, it's um, good to know that there's eight. I'll, I'll check that. Did you know the one that'll come your desk last week? Yeah. Thank you. I do know that three of them have come back. So we do it only in two. Most weeks the last. We'll let, yeah, we'll get a confirmation on the list of names. <coughs> oh, sure. Um, if not, we can get that taken care of because we'll need to get it taken care of um, before the weekend in case any we have a Thursday week, which is Saturday. So make sure we get that taken care of. Um, any interest in discussion on them? No. Okay. Did you make a motion? Okay. Um, so all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? One of these services do we fall under? Um, I thought offhand it would be the second, <laughs> but I didn't look at it extensively. Great G. It's something that we should really look into for budgeting, though, okay. um, because my guess is even if we go forward with the conversion that we're going to be on the hook for higher rates to pay for that, mm -hmm. if that's what's going on. Great. So we need to budget for that. It is a clarifying question we could ask, but. Well, because. Assuming everything gets switched over to LED, we'll be using less. Mm -hmm. Right, but the rates stay the same. 
same, you know, to, per, to yeah. pay off the loan. Okay. So I'm not really sure. Okay. Um, yeah, I think she should. Uh, from Everest Source, I noticed that our rates are increasing. Okay. All right. Okay. By 2.5% this year okay. and an additional 1.5%. suggesting that um, you all decrease the value of this property. This is um, formerly owned by the Bennetts at the end of Silver Street okay. um, by $36,400 due to how the barn was um, entered into the Avatar software versus um, how he's now viewing okay. the barn to value. Um, so assessing ultimately lies um, with the select board for you to approve or not approve. He's recommending that you um, sign the abatement for this value, and if so, then he will defend that with BTLA, who will um, arbitrate over the final conclusion of, of the abatement. Um, but he, he needs your voice as to whether or not you support the conclusion of what he came to. Um, he goes into some detail in the letter about how he valued um, the barns separately um, rather than together and how that affects the value. Um, Denise was thinking that it's a little bit confusing um, and it reads kind of like six of one and a half dozen of the other. Um, and if you thought it valuable, then I could invite Mr. Roberts in to discuss how he came to the change in value. The reason why I'm confused is one building now. Yeah. I guess it was three buildings before and they put it all under one roof and it's one building now, but square footage has not changed. So I'm not sure why we give 36,000. Mm. I, I guess that's my, if it changed to, you know, if it made it bigger or smaller or whatever. Yeah, I, I, it, I agree. But this, so the, the camera system people that live in the water district that have been attending meetings and are having a, a pretty fair amount of concern about how things are being handled there. And I am fully aware of the subtleties between like the Board of Water Trustees and the Board of Selectmen and that this is an elected board that has separate RSAs from you. But some of the concerns that I have and that the group has are that some of the things that could potentially happen could have a huge impact on the town. Um, just this week, a letter from DES came <coughs> into the water district about our well being run below where it should be run. Um, a lot of the concerns have to do with what will happen if we 
end up polluting the river or we end up compromising the drinking water. Property values, um, a reputation of the community, um, not to mention the fact that police have had to be called to these meetings for the way that they're being chaired and handled. So I wanted to speak as a member of the Water District and a person who's been following this closely, um, let the board know that this is going on and make sure that it goes on the record that people are super concerned about it. I also wanted to suggest that you potentially look into ways that as we may have some oversight of this going forward. Like what, are, what can we do? What options do we have to do anything about it? And I don't know if anybody else has still wanted to speak or... Anybody else? Yeah, Angela Matthews and I live at 437 Locust Street in, uh, here and I'm in the water and sewer district. Um, so I have both services at my property. There are, as I understand it, there are about 500 households on the system, all residents of the town. So uh, bringing this concern forward on behalf of all of us who live in the town of Rollinsburg and have some concerns in particular about um, some potential backsliding. And I will give you one example. Uh, on Locust Street, I live, I've lived there for going on five years. Not, I'm not a very long time resident of the town. For three of those years, I repeatedly brought a concern about low water pressure on my street to the Water Commission and was told repeatedly that there were various reasons. In the winter, there's ice and that slows the pressure, that lowers the pressure. In the summer, it's not a full tank. Whatever it was, there was a seasonal reason for why I had really it, low water pressure. And so last year, or about last year, it was down to a trickle. And I went to another district meeting and brought it to the attention one more time to the commission. Superintendent Ray McNeil was at my house the next day at 8 a.m. He came inside my house to check all the pressure and to see what he could discern from that. He then went outside to the hydrant down the street and he said, I'll be back in five minutes and we'll see what happens. He replaced an aged, rusted valve in that hydrant and it immediately restored the pressure in my system. He came back to check and see if that had done anything and I said, oh, it's more than 100% better. It's like 500% better. So then he said, um, great, you'll see another change shortly because I'm going to go to the hydrant on the other end of the street. And he swapped out a valve in the hydrant, which on the other end of the street is across from the grade school. So my concern here is that in terms of backsliding, what I mean is if we, we have the expertise of someone who is very, very qualified to do his job and pays attention when someone brings something to his attention, which did, was not my past experience. And that is the reason that I'm very concerned about what is you know, beginning to happen and percolate in our district. Um, so I thought about the impact. So it seems like a minor inconvenience not to have very good water pressure in your house. So that's one thing. But it's a safety factor. If those fire hydrants are not able to produce water at an amount that would put out a fire in either the grade school or any house on that street, what would that danger be to the entire neighborhood? So that is um, my experience with the district and, uh, and with my great satisfaction in the changes I have seen. Now these things cost money. There's no question about that. It costs money to meet the kinds of standards we have to meet in the 21st century. And the things that were mentioned earlier about the integrity, not just of the system, and this water table, everyone's sharing the water table. So if we think this is related only to the 500 households who are drawing water off uh, towers, those the water in those towers comes from someplace. So every house is impacted by the water sewer district, which is another reason for the select board and the town of Rollins Group to consider managing that district in a different way. It's a district within our, our town. It's a village within the village. And um, so the, the other thing that I wanted to say about that is um, the environmental impact to the entire ecosystem, which Tamara was talking about a minute ago. Um, 
those are reasons why the select board and the entire town of Rollinsford should be concerned about what happens in the water sewer district. Even though it does not attach itself to every house, it serves and impacts every house in this town. So I will um, share with you the comments that I wrote and my concerns. And I'm looking at what's happening, you know, if you say, oh, Flint is a long way from us. Kentucky is a long way away. And those are recent examples of crisis in water systems. There's a crisis in York's water system. And they're relying on Kittery to provide them with water. But their requirement is if Kittery is going to send them water, they have to put ammonia in the water. Well, they already chlorinate their water, which would create a toxic gas in their system. So these, these kinds of problems that are coming closer and closer to our community are of concern to me and of concern to how we manage this district. And I do have, I would like to just um, hand you my remarks, which I did prepare in writing uh, and things to share with you so that um, I would be on record with my concerns. Thank you. Anybody else? What is? The next sewer district meeting. June 12th. Time? 6.30 p.m. at the Legion. Okay. No other Thank comments? You. All right. Motion to go to non-public. Um, we have to go to non-public. So after that, our meeting will be over. I move the agenda for non-public session to address welfare. 